What is up guys? Welcome back to the Four to Make Your Loco channel. I know it's been a long, long time since my last video, a little over two months now, but it's been super busy here at the shop. I managed to get in a few vacations and now we're back to work. So videos hopefully from this point forward will be coming out pretty consistently uh, in the schedule here. So today we have one heck of a video to come back with and that is a, a, a situation that still blows my mind. Okay, so let's talk about it a bit. So this 2018 Ford F-150 Limited, has every bell and whistles on it, um, came in, the customer initially contacted me and said, you know, gee, I'm getting errors for my rear side obstacle detection uh, modules in the back and they're kind of going on the fritz and then my climate control is a little erratic and you know, there's a lot of different things going on. You check it out. I said, yeah, we'll fit you in a week or two. So while he's waiting to get in the shop, um, he's driving along, still using the vehicle, obviously. And one day, either while he's driving or when he came out from a store or something like that, he went in to start the vehicle up and the thing was just unresponsive. So he had the vehicle towed on the hook to the shop. I said, I'll work it in. And you guys aren't going to believe what I found on it. Um, so basically what happened and we'll get into a little bit with the scan tool and what I found in the back on the vehicle itself. I still need to repair it. Uh, basically what I found is there was water intrusion into the rear tail lamps of the vehicle. Usually not a big deal. It may burn out some balls, make them blow up inside of there, stuff like that. Uh, back in the day and you'd get a new housing for $40, $50, $100, right? New OE housings. Some even include bulbs. Not too bad, no big deal, right? It happens. Happens with headlamps too. Uh, no big deal. But in this case, it is a big deal. The reason being is because he has a limited, everything on here is just packed into here. So he has LED lamps in here instead of incandescent. And he has this side obstacle detection radar in the side here. So he has extra harnesses inside of there, the module, all that stuff in there. And it's very, very expensive as you can imagine. So basically what happened is water got into them, it corroded all the connectors inside of here, which you cannot get, right here, here, uh, the module itself, which I'll show you later, it, it corroded everything. And this module right here is on the medium speed CAN network that the modules use to talk to each other on the vehicle. So HS CAN, high speed CAN is where all the important modules are at, whereas medium speed are the medium important modules, right? And so it corroded it and it did it on both sides and then it started back feeding other powers and grounds into those comm circuits, taking down every other module on the medium speed can network. Yeah, so as you can imagine, a lot of things were down and erratic and eventually it didn't start for the guy. All because of the tail lamps. Whoa, almost banged my head. So again, no big deal. I found it in about an hour or two. Uh, we, we Definitely confirmed it, all that good stuff. Well, the problem is these tail lamps, these darn tail lamps are between $1,200 and $1,400 a piece. $1,200 and $1,400 a piece. So I asked the dealer, I said, that's very expensive. I know they're LED. Does that mean they include all the modules and everything else back here? No, they come bare, just like you see here. So that means we had to get the brackets, like a heat sink, and then the site obstacle detection modules in here. And they're around $450 each, you know, $500 or so, no big deal. But we had to locate them because the modules are on back order. So we had to pay $335 in locate fees just to find those modules, get the vehicle back up and running and going down the road. So with that, the connector that goes into here to the body was also corroded, as you can imagine. So we need to replace that. So all in all, for some tail lamps that are not working, his bill is $5,600 for some tail lamps. Four hours labor with a diagnosis and pulling everything apart and all that stuff and replacing the harness back there. And then of course, locate fees and then the module, the bracket and the lamps. $5,600. What's funny is the customer kind of knew this is coming and we told them, we thought, we thought we'd hear some yelling on the other end of the phone and the customer's like, that's great. Glad you found it. Why isn't it fixed yet? Didn't even care about the price. So anyways, what I want to do now, because this is a really weird concern to diagnose 
and I could see a lot of shops and people getting it wrong and misdiagnosing it, wasting even more money. Um, so I want to show you what I did to figure this out and pinpoint it first time out. So let's go over the scan tool and then we'll go over to the bed of the truck and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. Okay, so as of right now, the vehicle is not currently acting up, uh, mainly because it's been sitting outside for over a week and the 100 degree heat and everything kind of dried out and everything's kind of functional once again until it gets wet again and then it happens all over again. But I wanna walk you through the diagnostics I did on the scan tool about a week or so ago. Just kind of walk you through what I did. Honestly, I kind of just fell into the answer and I'll explain why. Uh, you know, some people may think it's experience. Uh, others may call it dumb luck. Maybe it's a little of both. But I want to walk you through what led me to the rear tail lamps on here. So let's get into a little bit. So when it first came in, um, in the cluster, it of course was showing the errors for the blind spot system, okay? And, you know, the cross traffic alert, all, all, all that stuff is all kind of built into those radars back there. It's all part of the same system. So it's showing all those different errors in there. That was consistent, just like it is right now. Uh, the other thing, the original complaint uh, the customer had a problem with was the uh, HVAC system. So when I came in here and I'm trying to use the HVAC system, the vehicle's running, it was dead, just like this. No matter what button you pressed on here, nothing would happen, nothing would light up, nothing at all. And the same thing for the radio controls right here. So the radio controls uh, were, the you know, screen was powered up on there, but the radio controls were not working at all. Not one button on there. Now, the thing about that is, um, is this right here, this radio controls and the HVAC controls is one big module behind there that screws into his faceplate, and it's called a FICM. Now, these FICMs, I think from 15 through 18, something like that, they had an issue with the original either software or hardware level inside of there where, yes, it's on the MS CAN network, like everything else is that's having a problem, um, and they would basically lock up. This FICM would lock up and it would be unresponsive. So you can't control the climate control and radio and everything else. It's all part of the same module. Because there was just so much information being crosstalked on the MS CAN network. I mean, you look at the MS CAN network on here. Whoo, everything. There's a million modules in the MS CAN network. So Ford kind of knows the FICM can lock up from all that, that traffic on there. And if you're finding that's an issue, you need to just go ahead and replace the FICM to the latest hardware level program and go from there. So this thing, like I said, was totally unresponsive. So obviously the fuse isn't blown. I mean, why would this whole thing be totally dead like that? Even if the module is locked up on there. So I said, it ain't that hard to pull that thing off there. You pull this up on here, you two screws right here. This whole thing folds down and you disconnect it. Did a hard reset on by disconnecting it for a while. Still absolutely unresponsive. Okay. Moving on. Let's move on to this right here. We know this is consistent. Let's go back there and check it out. So the next thing I did is I started pulling codes on the network here. And what you'll notice on here is there's a lot of codes for the network from all kinds of different modules, having problems talking to each other. So there's a couple modules right here. They're all passing and talking. Those are all basically HS cans right there, uh, network stuff. But then you start looking at MS cam modules, like the APAM, BCM, the one side, the IPC, you know, the PAM module, you know, all, all these different things. Look at them all. Look at all these codes in here, all these U codes in here. Yeah. And again, our rear obstacle detection was totally unresponsive. So I'm looking at all these codes on here, and they're throwing codes and, and all that stuff. And then I started looking at all these modules right here that, yes, they're optional. They're not on all models of the F-150, all trims. But this is a limited, I mean, a limited top of the line. How the heck are all these modules not equipped on a limited model, Right? So you have sight obstacle detection, the rear trunk module. Obviously, it has a power lift gate on there. You know, the locks and all that stuff back there. Um, look at all this stuff. The FICM, obviously. 
the driver's door module, driver's seat module, all these things are unresponsive. I said, wait a second. Something's going on with this MS CAN network. So I looked over there and I said, which one of these modules, these are all the modules that are optional, but probably are equipped on a limited model. Um, look at all of them that are on MS CAN. Almost all of them are. There's only three modules or so that should not be on this vehicle. So they're all on the MS CAN network. I said, okay, okay. We have an MS CAN network area where we the network's down, and then we have a definite constant going on here with the blind spot system, the bliss system. Let's go back there and check it out. Charge my lightning. Installed the fast charger over there. Uh, so I went back here, and they're simple enough to pull off two 8 millimeter screws. Very careful, pop them out from the bed there. And what I found, as you can imagine, was connectors that were just beyond corroded on here. I mean, there's tons of fuzz inside of there, okay? And this is the one harness that goes down. And then I start looking inside of here. Plenty of water inside of here. The connector for the bliss module was corroded, three or four of them. And at least two on here were corroded too. And this harness and these connectors are only part of the lens. So I look over here, and of course, a couple of pins on here and I got corroded. And then, of course, there's water getting into this module at the seams on here. And that's why. So I'm like, okay, this is obviously an issue. You start sniffing, it smells like burnt electronics inside of there. Definitely an issue. You know how simple this diagnosis at this point? You disconnect it. Disconnect them, put them down. Disconnect it, put it down. I went back over there, okay? Cycled the key once again. I did a network test once again, and all those modules came back. Every module this vehicle is equipped with came back alive on the network, no faults at all. The only faults were the two tail lamps in the back and even our climate control and radio came back. Everything's working just fine now, except for the tail lamps because they're disconnected. That's how I diagnosed it, honestly, because I, I started putting the pieces of the puzzle together and I'm looking and all these U-codes, they were all in the same network. We have a constant fault back there. What's out in the weather? Let's go check it out. And sure enough, there it was. And that's all great. That's why you only got charged like an hour or two for diagnosis, pulling the thickum apart, pulling this apart, looking at stuff, testing stuff. But now comes the cost with it. So like I said, these are like twelve to $1,400 a piece. Uh, it's about four fifty, maybe sixty for this bracket, this heat sink. And there's locate fees. And then... Um, if you guys run across this and you're like, well, I, I'm going to order all that stuff up or get it from a junkyard or whatever you get it from. And then you're like, well, I definitely have to change the pigtail on here. There is a pigtail that's available for this. You can lop it off and put on its place in a new one from Ford. Um, but that pigtail is like $99 times two. This harness right here goes across the entire bed underneath there. And has the connectors and everything else over here. The right gauge wires. Um, all new. New grounding point. All these points on here. And where it goes back to the main harness. Uh, to the front of the vehicle. This thing, my cost anyways, uh, was like $98. Hmm, am I going to buy two pigtails for $200? Or am I going to buy this for $98 my cost? And it's all built perfectly and all that. So we're gonna replace the entire harness back here in the back side of the bed here, the tail lamps, the modules, and the heat sinks. And what I'm gonna do going back together, uh, very important, is we are going to use the Motorcraft electrical grease, the XG12 grease, on every one of these connectors. We're gonna load it up inside of here, here, um, everywhere inside of there. I'll put it on this side of it right here to make sure everything's watertight. There's water seals on the back side here, uh, but you want that extra layer of protection on the actual pins, the metal pins inside of there. And I'll go ahead and put a dab on the rest of this going forward, even though they're not an issue. So, yeah, these, these modules back here cause all of that aggravation 
and all that money. So we're gonna put in the latest and greatest stuff and we're gonna grease it up and seal it up so it doesn't happen again. But I figured I would just bring you guys along to show you guys how expensive some of these newer vehicles are getting to work on uh, and, and fix. I mean, they're unbelievable. I can't imagine paying to fix anything on this Lightning right here. The battery, the, the rear tail lamps, anything. And these new vehicles, you're just getting out of hand. That's all for now. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think about the uh, current state of the freaking automotive world nowadays and repairs and costs and all that stuff. It's just, it's just getting out of hand. This is crazy. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.